Good evening, everybody. It's Shelley Johns here from Gimpy and Ross Henderson from Good Gimpy. Good evening. <laughs> Hopefully, you're sitting so well. Pretty well. Um, I'm a Herbalife coach. Um, I've been with the company now for 28 years. Um, I've lost over 20 kilos, three dress sizes, 20 centimeters off my tummy. Uh, I absolutely love the skin um, products and the new um, hair products as well, the Herbal Aloe. Um, and I just turned 48 this year and I just feel fantastic. I love all that healthy aging aspect of the products as well. So tonight is all about um, social media and Facebook, but we're going to kick off with some good news. So let me just click on to the next one. So we love when you share, and I, I like some of these quotes that I've found. Power is gained by sharing knowledge, not hoarding it. So we love to share, as you know, on this group, that we're stronger together when you learn, teach, and when you get, give. And I love those as well. And we are stronger when we listen and smarter when we share. So I get really good at listening and get really great at sharing everything because it really helps your team to be strong. And I think when there's a whole bunch of sidelines, which we do have on this call, people that have different, from different organisations all come together, it actually makes a very strong group um, because we all um, have different um, strengths and experiences as well and personalities. So um, let's kick off the good news. Um, Roseborough, I know your camera's not working, but that's no problems at all. You're based in Brisbane. And I know you've been running face-to-face uh, -face weight loss challenges for a long time and you've got the next one coming up. So would you be able to share sort of how you go about it, like where you hold them and how you get your, your participants? Yeah, of course I will. It's um, Rosemary Gerard, as you said. Uh, and I did start, uh, I was on Herbalife, I have been for 26 years, lost eight kilograms initially um, and uh, tremendous energies and great health results from Herbalife. So um, I will be forever on Herbalife. I love it. Uh, and so consequently for me, um, holding the weight loss challenges gives me an opportunity to assist and, and uh, encourage other uh, people in that challenge uh, to get the results that they're looking for. And uh, I've been running them for 10 years now, coming up 11 really. Uh, I do four, um, I, I run them, for 10 weeks over these, you know, the school term. Uh, it's only an hour. So I, at the present time, they're now in a, um, at the Sunnybank, um, uh, it's a bowl, it was a bowls club, but um, yeah, so it's Sunnybank Hall. Uh, and I run them say from 6.30 to 7.30 uh, at night. They're educational, so uh, they're fun. Um, and there's a lot of sharing uh, of results. Uh, a lot of sharing of, um, you know, sampling. Um, and and they really, they really are fabulous because uh, the people that I get there, I've put out, I think, nearly three, 400 flyers in the last few days. Um, and with just, you know, for the weight loss challenge itself. But what I do rely on, to be honest with you all, is those who come to the challenge, uh, I encourage them to invite someone along. So most of the ones who come now, uh, they, some of them, to be honest with you, and many of them are distributors. Okay, so they've you know joined many many years ago. And but what happens is they bring a friend, or that friend brings a friend, and then uh, the mums are bringing their daughters. The daughters are bringing their mums. Uh, I've had several men uh, come in the last one. So, uh, yeah, they're, they're very uh, wonderful, friendly. Um, everyone, you know, uh, enjoys that um, just, yeah, coming along and, and getting the results that they're deep down wanting. And the last lady who won that challenge, she was getting close to 70 and she lost nearly 10 9.7 kilograms in the 10 weeks. Um, so, yeah, and they age from, gosh, the youngest lass is 17. And I'd say the oldest one, I think is maybe 74. Uh, so, I mean, I'm 72 years young. Uh, and I just love, I love doing what I do because... It gives me the opportunity to be in front of people. And then, you know, and quite often, nine times out of 10, 
uh, they'll sign up, you know, eventually because they get on, you know, something or other and, um, yeah, and they love those protein bars because I always start off on the first night with protein bars because it's all about protein. Um, so, yeah, I, I just think they're fantastic. And, and it keeps me uh, on the straight and level too because, you know, I don't want to gain loads of weight and I don't want to be unhealthy. Um, yeah, so, it's, you know, it works both ways. So that's my story. Cool. Thank you so much, Rosemary. So, you know, it's a great community that you've created. And, yes, we're talking about Facebook tonight, but how yeah. great is it that, you know, the basics still work and those uh, fundamentals of, you know, talking to people face-to-face -face yeah. and gathering a group of people together is still very effective and that's how you want to do things, which I know I really love that way of doing the business too. Yeah. Um, though I juggle it a little bit with social media. So thank you very much for sh sharing, Rosemary. We can't wait to hear the results that everyone gets from your yeah. challenge. Yes, I will. Um, Jan, I know you had um, some good news this week. Uh, yeah, I had um, I upgraded two of my VIP people on new products, which is really exciting. One uh, took the aloe and the other one took the beverage. Mm. Um, and that has really sort of helped their results and feeling really good, particularly with the herbal aloe. And it was the original. I'm very partial to getting people on the original. The, the flavoured ones are good, but uh, I think the good old-fashioned original is excellent for health and uh, getting results and things. Anyway, the other really uh, exciting thing was a, a long-lost um, member uh, ordered a 1,000 volume points. So that was really exciting, and she has gone back on the products and really loving them. Fantastic. So, well, that's exciting, a success builder. Um, so how did you upgrade people onto the products? Do you give samples? Like, or, or what are you doing to upgrade? Uh, more often than not, if, if I'm face-to-face -face with a person, yes, I will always give them a sample of what we're talking about. But these people are sort of in Sydney. So just through conversation and, and you know, sort of doing follow-up and really asking, I'm a person that likes to ask them a lot of questions. Not in a, you know, sort of I don't talk at them, I try and talk with them. Mm. Uh, and just find out what's happening for them and where they're sort of perhaps... Um, maybe not doing the right thing for themselves or, you know, if they're, particularly the person with the aloe, they weren't going to the toilet regularly enough. So we spoke about the herbal aloe and what it can do, um, what it's done for myself and what it's done for my, my um, son-in-law. He, he has, you know, an issue like that. So just sharing a few stories. Um, so they did sort of say, yes, okay, I'll put it in my order, which they did, and they have had great results since they've... Um, been on it so just by sharing the stories more than anything without making claims I always make a point of saying you know this is not a cure or you know I'm not diagnosing the products or anything like that but you know this is what's happened for myself this is what's happened for my son-in-law if I'm talking about the yellow and a couple of other people uh, I think by sharing the stories it, it helps them sort of realize if they give it a go it could happen for them as well fantastic yep yeah well results are always what inspires people to, to get started and to keep going so fantastic. Thank you for sharing, Jan. And um, I know that um, our Mondays are a flyer day, so I know you would have seen the post <laughs> put out um, of us doing flyers in Gympie. So, it's, you know, it's not an easy um, area to do, but we, I think we did how many hours? Three? Better. Three hours of flyers today. So, and, you know, it's not the same as some places that are flatter and, you know, cities and suburbs where you can get lots out in that time. It takes a fair bit to get you know, those flies up. But we are doing one of each in each letterbox just for that reason. And I do know junk mail, as you know, because I don't think of it as junk mail. I think of it as change your life mail. Um, and I'm quite, you know, prepared to get a call from someone if they're not happy and, and handle it if I have to. Um, and they can always give me the address if they don't want me to do it again. <laughs> but I could just change their life, which often happens. Um, so yeah, we've had, had a pretty good week. So we've got our, our um, online challenge, the Healthy You Challenge um, start, which is kind of like a face-to-face -face challenge anyway, because a lot of people are, um, they're on Herbalife and they're seeing me, lot, most of them I see face-to-face, -face. there's someone in New Zealand and um, a couple of people from other places as well. But um, yeah, most, most of it is local and I do get to see them face-to-face, -face, but I still think that, um, you know, for Grace in South Australia and Lindy and um, Canberra and um, uh, Melanie in New Zealand that it's great to be able to plug in to a support system with lots of really good resources so it's all on challenge uh, no, a healthy active lifestyle anyway so you can see all the resources coming through so if you want to jump on board and be part of it just 
let us know and you can join in the 28 day healthy you challenge because you're basically working on your own personal goals that's the way that it works so that's our good news is there anything else no, that's <laughs> So, um, okay, so tonight's call is all about just some basic tips on building your Facebook profile. So if you're very new to Facebook, like Jam was saying, just getting some of it just about to start, or maybe you've been on for a while and you just need to tidy it up a little bit because now you are a Herbalife ambassador and you just might have to look at um, your page in a little bit more um, detail. So let's have a look. So um, I just wanted to go through the guide to um, some of the content. So basically you want to create your own profile then you want to manage it you want to be able to post and create shareable content so there's two different types of content either one that you make yourself which I prefer I like to do things but I do also like to share content um, but I'm very careful of the content that I share and any links and things like that that are related to it so there's some things you need to look out to for um, liking and sharing so getting people to like your stuff and to en get some engagement uh, and then you're connecting to people, but you really want that genuine engagement and we're going to be talking about that too. So the guide to Facebook content marketing, um, these are some of the tips that 60% um, of people are more likely to like, comment and share if you've only got a maximum of three lines. I don't know if you've seen some posts where it's like really, really long. Sometimes people won't read it all or they'll skim over it. <laughs> and um, not pay the attention. So sometimes something catchy. Uh, look, there's definitely a time and place for a more expanded post, but if you're doing them every single time, you need a bit of variety. You want to be posting consistently, like once a day or something like that. Uh, I've seen some varied ones with um, you know, three to five times a day. Um, I think one or two posts a day is, is fine, but if you've got other pages and groups, obviously you've, you've got to manage them as well. So often you'll see me do something on my timeline and then I'll be sharing it into the other groups anyway, um, which is fine too. Though Facebook does love, um, you know, it loves stuff that's unique and original that you've created yourself. So if you have to co copy the things and then put it into another group or page, that's okay too. Uh, so the optimal times to post. So it's saying that the 18 to 24 demographic is highest from uh, 9 to 10 p.m. So I know that I wouldn't be posting at that time of the night personally, but I'm not in that demographic. So um, I do feel that um, mums and a lot of people in, in our demographic would um, be that 7 to 8 p.m. time slot. Okay, so you need to be thinking about when's the best time for me to post and what's going to get um, the biggest audience. Because remember, Facebook works on these algorithms and, and things that we don't even really know a lot about. Um, so it's really just thinking about when you post. I tend to post whenever I've got time, <laughs> but I like doing something first thing in the morning and I like to share something as I'm doing it because I like it when it's fresh, um, you know, like so if I've made something, I'd like to share it when I've actually made it. <laughs> or if someone's given me a result, I like to try and share it just after they've shared it with me or I've done their results because I think it's really relevant and, and fresh. Okay. Yep. One thing that I was going to add into that is you've got to also work out what is your Facebook page for. Is it a fan page, which is what we used to call business pages, they're called fan pages today, or is it your own page and you're just, you're using it, you're putting bits and pieces into it, and then you're adding in, um, because you're remembering in your own page, it's pretty well friends and family that's all that's seeing it. So you have to work out what are you using your Facebook page for? Are you marketing purposely online? <coughs> And if you are, then you have to use all the sites that are available, which is Facebook, which is Twitter, which is Instagram, which is LinkedIn. And if you follow the, the gurus that are talking about it at the moment and, and you make it your fan page and it's where you want to go, across all the platforms, if you're not doing a content of at least 100 bits of content a day, you're not going to you're not going to get through the noise factor that's out there if if that's the way you're operating your Facebook page. You have to work. What do you mean by 100 bits of content per exactly day? Exactly what that is. Anything and everything you're talking about. But that's across every platform. So you've really got to be someone that's prepared to sit on a computer and do all that. So you've got to work out what sort of what sort of Facebook or marketing you're really looking to do. Cool. So so <clears throat> relating back to that, obviously I'm flat out just doing <clears throat> Facebook. Yep. Because I just can't get my head around doing all these other platforms. I either don't enjoy it or it just doesn't feel like if I was doing it, I was doing it because I just wanted 
I know I don't feel like I'd be genuine if I was doing everything. Mm. Can I say though, Shelley, by the same token, if you do LinkedIn, Instagram and Facebook, you can, I mean, I don't, I do them separately, but you can do one so it links to all three. So you don't have to do them individually. Yeah. It does actually get a, a greater target audience, especially yeah. on Instagram and LinkedIn, LinkedIn more business like, but it's. Yeah. I just find it difficult to focus on more than one thing, but I get that. <laughs> Um, yeah. my yeah, platform like that because I think I just like being out face to face I think in reality and on the uh -huh. phone it's just um, the way that yeah. I like operating and then you're right sorry just to go back to um, yes you can have a personal page and a fan page mm -hmm. um, I just have a personal page um, I decided not to do the fan page thing I just didn't want to do, you know, spread myself too thin again uh, but it's a personal choice so I'm just um, letting because I know Jan said that she wants to learn more about this. So you can have your personal page and put all your personal stuff on it, which is great, which means it doesn't have anything about your friends and family and all the things you're doing in your personal life. And then your fan page is basically who you're portraying yourself as, as you know, you're, you're an authentic self, as you're a business person and a public figure. So you, you have to make the choice. Do you want both? Um, two different separate ones or all on one and it, it, either way it's fine but it depends on how you want to um, put yourself out there yeah well from our point of view we've both got just standard um, personal pages yeah um, I see at the moment I don't have the energy or the, or the require or the want to actually have a fan page and work what I know is required to get through what I'm going to call the noise because there's so much stuff out there to actually get my platform then to be over, overrunning everyone else and get it noticed in the marketplace. So you've got to work out what you want. So, so that's important. Yeah, and I've had two inquiries in the last week through my Facebook page. Um, so if someone likes Gimpy Lifestyle Central or Gimpy Fit Club, I would go and say, hey, thanks for liking the page. You know, feel free to come in. And but So I've had someone that um, inquired about coming to Fit Club. I think I've had two people actually. Um, so one's coming on Wednesday night. So she's, And I know that she's already said that she needs to lose weight. Um, so she's coming straight into the center. It's you know, it all says what it is um, So I'll just be offering her a free wellness evaluation and seeing if I can step her through as well And she's and we've got mutual friends So sometimes that makes it easier too when you know who because I obviously went and checked her Facebook profile to make sure That she's someone that I can work with and you know um, it, That's really important as well that you just go and sometimes uh, view the profiles But we're going to go through that in a second yep. anyway, so let's just flick through um Okay, so some of the best days for posting with um, um, Facebook. So it's saying weekends get the highest level of engagement on Facebook, but sometimes weekends is when I want to just ch tune out a little bit. Um, and also people uh, browse on their desktops and check it out um, when they've got break, uh, breaks at work. So that's interesting to know too. And it's saying the worst day is Tuesdays and the best days is Thursday, Friday, Saturday and Sunday. So that's very interesting to think that. But, you know, often I like kicking stuff off on Mondays and finishing off stuff on a Friday too. Um, so during work hours, um, the best times are between 1 and 4 p.m., which I'm pretty sure people should be working, <laughs> working at that time. But you've also got mums before school pickup and lots of other different situations as well. So it's interesting just to think about when when are you going to post? When are the best times? Especially if you're doing Facebook. Well, a question, a question back on that yeah. is when are you looking at Facebook? So you have to think of that. When are you actually on this platform? And then when you're on the platform, other people are too. And, you know, you, and at the end of the day, you're trying to engage with people like you. And that's the biggest thing. You're engaging with people like you. So if you're on the platform at a certain time of day or night, and I understand work and all those things can be different, but don't just go and be on the platform at a certain day because the system says that if you would never look at the platform in that time on that day. So you've got to think about whenever we do anything at the moment, when do you do it? When you're on it, that's the perfect time for you to be, if that's your normal habit. Like Shelley, she went down to the school today to pick Caitlin up and what is the first thing you message me? So, what, so if she's messaging me from the school, She's also got a phone in her hand. I'm technically bored. I'm waiting for my child. <laughs> so what else am I doing? I'm scrolling Facebook. I wasn't but bored. In principle, I was letting you know I was thinking about you. But in principle, you're scrolling, <laughs> scrolling through the system is what, the, the, what we're talking about here. When would you be scrolling? So when is the other demographic of the same individual like you be doing exactly the same sort of thing? And Gary Vaynerchuk, um, Gary V, he 
always says, look at where the attention is. Yep. What, where are people's attention? And you're right, because yep. I walk down to the school and I have my, I purposely don't carry my phone in my hand, uh, especially when I'm doing school pickup and stuff, because I want the girls to know that they've got my full attention, that I, there's not a distraction on me. So it was in my bag. So they can't see that I've, I've got, of course, if it goes off, I can answer it if it's an emergency or anything. But there was heaps of mums sitting waiting for their kids to be picked up. And what are they all looking at? Their phones. Right. So obviously that just before uh, school pickup time could be a very good time to engage with people yeah. as well. Yeah. You just got to notice what everybody else is doing and then start to think of that a lot of the time when we operate this platform. Yeah. Sorry, Gal. So um, some of the dominant players in the social networking, we're talking about all the different ones, and I love that Lindy's using more than one. I'm going to pick her brain some this week. <laughs> um, so looking at 58% um, of people have um, a personal profile, LinkedIn, Twitter, MySpace, Google, Instagram, Pinterest, Tumblr, and there's a whole bunch of other ones as well. So again, it's using what you you know, and, and partake, taking in what you um, are interested in and what you feel will give you value as well. Um, Lindy, the other thing too with all those platforms, if you actually read Gary's V Crushing It book, he will tell you that you should not put what you put on Facebook, you shouldn't put on LinkedIn. What you put on LinkedIn, you shouldn't put on Instagram because they've all got a different style of person that's following it. That everybody in each one of those platforms is a different type of person so you, so you yeah. could tweak that's it. exactly what i do because yep. um yeah because initially i was doing the same for everything and then i unlinked it and i don't, yep. can't remember how i unlinked it even to help jan yep. um but i just magically did it um but um i know that uh, linkedin's more business so i just yes. you know i i do i it's a bit of a pain but there is um a mums in business uh, association who initially based in the uk and they've got a book it's really cheap but it, it's purely on instagram and that's been i'll have a look through it and put yep. some things forward but it's that would be great. it's a really good book yeah, yeah. So it, it is important that you, un right. you understand if you click and create a post on facebook and then screen, um, save it share it and throw it straight on instagram you're not going to get the same reaction as what you could off Facebook or Instagram because they're different styles of people that are watching it and viewing it. Same with Twitter. LinkedIn is very much, you could write it. You could write novels on LinkedIn and someone was liable to sit there and read it because it's, again, it's a different style of person that's it's on those pages, yeah. The only thing I would say, though, out of all the ones that are, I don't know Tumblr at all, but out of all the ones that are listed there on MySpace, I've never heard of, um, but Twitter, if... I've, I've ended up deleting that app because so many people have gone through and tried to copy the account and that's been a real, it's been, and it, it's a bit, I don't know, it's a very different to everything else. And I just think that's if every time something goes wrong, it's through Twitter. So I've just deleted that and I just stick with four or five. Yep. So obviously each one probably has a demographic that loves Correct. using it. You know, you find a lot of younger yeah. people mm -hmm. like Twitter and um, well, Snapchat's the other one. Yeah, girls love that. Yep. And um, but LinkedIn, Gary V was saying LinkedIn's definitely up and coming. So he was very excited about yep. that and he thought about LinkedIn. Yep. So make sure uh, if that's something you want to look into. Um, he was saying they're putting a lot more uh, into upgrading it, and uh, so that it's going to be one of the big. You know, major if you're really ones. interested about LinkedIn, one of the best people to follow on there is Richard Branson mm -hmm. because how he writes is really really interesting, and he's obviously a very intelligent man and has to be for what he's done. Yep. Uh, if you watch what he puts up on LinkedIn, completely different to anything you might see on Facebook, and it's a really good good one to follow. Yep. Excellent, great tip. Thank you, Lindy. The That's other, right. The other thing I'm gonna to say too, is if you can say with any of those platforms, if you have the time, and this is the killer, if you have the time, if you type into Google, how do I operate LinkedIn? How do I operate Instagram? How do I, whatever it is, and you've got the time, any bit of information today is almost at your fingertips and a lot of it is lately is all YouTube in front of you and they will step you step by step by step by step. So if you're looking for any information at all mm -hmm. and you have time up your sleeve instead of you know, watching Netflix or something that I may do from time to time, mm -hmm. you can go and click into that and it will get all the information you require in most cases. Oh, good. So um, just a few other stats as well before we get into the nitty gritty. Um, <clears throat> so more than 500 million active users on Facebook. I'm sure it's more now. I think yep. this is a little bit outdated. Of which 50% log on to Facebook every single day. Spending over 700 billion minutes per month. That's just <laughs> hard to conceive. 
Um, so what used to be a place for college students and younger is now a place for everyone. According to new reports, the fastest growing demographic on Facebook in 2010, and here we are in 2019, is adults over 50, 55 and over. The largest overall demographic on Facebook is 35 to 54, which makes up 29% of all Facebook users. So that's very interesting. And 54.8% of Facebook users are between the ages of 25 to 54. So it's probably our target market. That's what I would say, target demographic. Um, is on Facebook. So that's probably why I tend to use it. Plus I enjoy it as well. I think I, yep. I enjoy <clears throat> using that platform. Yep. yep. So what they talk about and when you talk about all this sort of stuff is Facebook's very heavily and we're talking about it tonight. <clears throat> the platforms are always going to continue to change and new things are going to come out. So what happy happens is our girls, 12 year olds, 13 year olds, they start to pick up on a new platform. And it's called the grandma effect. When grandma gets onto that site and starts using it, another platform comes out and then that platform becomes for a different age group and a different generation. It is actually what goes on with all of these systems. Mm -hmm. Because Facebook was never designed to do what it does today. At all. Oh. <clears throat> okay, so just a few other demographics and I think that we're ready to go to <clears throat> how to set up your page. Um, so 77% are women on Facebook, 66% are men. And obviously you can get stats for other platforms as well. Um, so just going through some of the demographics there. I the thing that I liked was here with the people in the cities and suburbs and rural, I guess, oh, because, yeah, it's around very similar. Um, and for me, that rural is uh, important as well because that's out where we live. Um, some of the uh, income brackets and um, some of the people that are obviously college, high school and that sort of thing. So there's a lot of people on Facebook. So, and obviously when you're doing something like a, um, a sponsored post or some sort of um, ad campaign, you can actually you know, target your market as well. Um, so there's lots of different ways of using Facebook. So let's just go through on how to set up your page. So improving your profile, you're really building a trust and like factor. And your profile picture is like your storefront. So you want to have um, probably a head and shoulders shot if you can, being presentable, smiling, and thinking of yourself as that public figure now. And your cover photo, so the profile picture is a small one, which I'll show you in a second, and the cover photo is the big one in the back. And it should show who you are or what's important to you, your family or, or what you love. And of course you can change it. Um, and uh, with the previous one we've done on the Herbalife requirements, you can't have like Herbalife imaging in the back, just as, as you know. Uh, the bio is the key words that say who you are, where you grew up, what your previous, listing your previous jobs, if it's to your advantage and what people relate to. And then your featured photos, which I'm gonna show you, uh, and I'll flick back and forth between these two, is photos that show your life and your lifestyle, variety, family, fun, positive and successful. So I'll show you in a second. So this is my profile, which has obviously been updated, but this is my cover photo here, the big one, it's got a quote. This one here is my profile picture. So, um, and you can edit it. So you click on here and it'll let you change it. Um, it's got my name, obviously. And then I've got some keywords, mum, happy, creative, active, grateful, healthy, entrepreneur. I have changed this since then, but you can do it so you can edit it. So there's lots of things and then it shows where, you, where you've worked or what pages you relate to. I've also put my, uh, actually I've changed it to go Herbalife now. And these are your featured photos here. So you, I actually chose these. So you need to go in, click edit featured and go and select nine photos or so of photos that represent you and who you are. And of course you can update them as you go along as well. So let's just quickly go back. Thank you. So profile picture, think about what profile picture do I want to use or even have a few um, that you can use. I like to change one fairly <laughs> regularly. Uh, cover photo, sometimes could be a quote or it could be a family picture. I like to kind of do a collage -y thing that, that suits me. And um, most people know I like to do that arty thing. Before you go any further, you'll often find people, you'll come on Facebook page, will go such and such, just change their profile picture and it's come up in front of you. They do that, often people do that on purpose to get you to get their, your attention on their page. That you can purposely, that's his purposely done at times. It may not be, but often it is, especially on someone's potential semi-business page, 
will change their cover photo or their profile picture picture for you to look at and like it, then they've, they've got a slight engagement from you, which creates help change the algorithm within Facebook. Yes, that is true. Um, so your bio, your keywords, so let's just go back again, sorry. So this is the bio here. So you can edit it. And so it's just a group of words or a statement that represents you. And then it, you can have, so all these things listed, you can have them hidden or you can have them shown. It's up to you. Um, obviously you can put a website in too and then you want to edit your your featured photos and um, again you can put where you live and where you're from or where you're born it's entirely up to you of what you show so does that help everyone yes. um, and I actually like the white background sometimes too I like that crisp whiteness about it but, um, but it's uh, I know I like to change it as well so that it's always quite different and sometimes a bit arty um, just because it gives me a way to be creative if I'm not I'm doing drawing at that time. So, oh, okay. So this is um, tips on, did I miss a page? No. No, okay. So tips on adding more friends with people you don't know. Okay, so um, I do two things that often people are sending me friends requests and sometimes I'm looking for people to send friends requests to. You don't want to go all out and just request 50 people because Facebook doesn't like that and they may... Um, ban you for doing that for a little while and then you know you'll be put in the naughty corner and then back you'll be able to go back again so the warm market is obviously people you know and you can um you can be a little bit more pitchy i guess with your friends and family because they know who you are but the cold market um they don't know you yet and if you're trying to sell things in post it can be a bit of a turn off if they don't really know who you are so who is your target audience we just talked about that and have a think about who is your ideal client and team member? And maybe write a list of the um, qualities that you would have in your ideal client. You know, what age are they? Um, you know, background, that sort of thing. Is it a mum? Do they have children? Um, you know, what sort of job or income bracket or anything like that that is your ideal client or team member so you know who you want to attract. Um, so I do this probably not every single day, but I often go searching for three new friends each day. Usually they're friends of friends. Um, but I'm very careful that I just go and have a quick look at their profile if I'm not sure who they are, what sort of person are they. Are they friends with other Herbalife people? Because if they are, I'm not going to send them a friend's request because I don't want any conflict of interest. Um, and look at who is liking your post. Definitely ch um, check out their profile. So before I send anyone a friend's request, I'm usually looking at their profile to make sure they're the sort of person that I want to be engaged with. Okay, and just remember that... It, it takes time to build the like and the trust. It's not going to happen overnight. So basically here, if I've got some friend requests, which means these people have sent me friends requests, I would click on their profile here, their name, before I would do this, and just so I can see who they are. Okay, or if I've gone in and I'm looking for friends of friends, it's the same thing. Um, but definitely with ethics, you want to make sure that they're not friends with another Herbalife member, just in case you're tapping into their center of influence. And you can also remember in the same area, you can unfriend somebody. You can take them off your page. You can unfollow somebody. You can remove any of that sort of scenario. So if you look at, we, we both operate differently. If someone that's in Herbalife that's, per say, not on this call, that was just met me somewhere and is in Herbalife, I generally will not accept the friend request. I just don't do it. Personally, I just don't do it because I know the minute I do that, I, unless I really, really know that person, I have no idea once I accept their friend request, can they then access all my friends and be sending information. I'm not saying they would or they wouldn't. I just don't leave, I don't leave myself open to that anymore in any way, shape or form. And I have, you know, when I first probably was around, I would have just gone a friend request to everybody. I have unfriended a lot of potential Herbalife people for exactly the same thing because I don't want, I don't I don't need to be getting information from their friends. I just don't. I want to be my own separate organisation, same entity. It's different on say collective groups and mastermind group. You're aware of who each each are. It's not such a drama. But I, if I just went to a meeting on this Saturday and someone said, oh, yeah, I got a friend request from, I won't accept it. Um, we had a lady that come into the, just the centre that's not in our team that's in a Cylon that works in our team sent. I know they sent Shelley a crest. I just don't accept it. I just that we all work oppositely different where that's concerned. I keep my page so, very clear. With so it that's concerned. personal choice yep, as well. Absolutely. So again, choose what feels right for you. But I thought I'd go back. I don't think I can see it. But 
um, when you're um, in, I think this is on the phone, but um, when you're on your computer, you can go into your settings and um, you can actually go in and put your settings uh, for your friends not to be shown um, yep. on Facebook. So they're not shown. So I've got mine up that high where you, I'm pretty sure if someone goes to try and see my friends list, they won't see it. Um, so there are ways. That, you mean so that it's private, Shelley? Is that what That's you mean? private, yes. Yep. Yeah, okay. And I think they're the things that you need to look at sometimes as well as having, because uh, some people and other uh, network, networking companies are trained to go in and, and access your friends list. Yeah. So um, have a think about those sort of things. If you're not sure uh, when we're together and if you bring your computer, we can always help and have a yep. look for you as well. Uh, but if you go into <coughs> settings and privacy, generally you can find all that sort of information. Um, so the day you plant the seed is not the day you eat the fruit. And of course, we know all about this. <laughs> we know about 90 day plans and being consistent. So, you know, social media is no different. Don't expect to friends request someone and all of a sudden they're going to want to become your client <laughs> or your member. It doesn't always work that way. And sometimes people don't, aren't commenting and liking, but they're still watching. I, um, when mum came up, one of her friends um, brought a card and a gift saying that she loves all my posts, but often she, she's not liking, you know, liking them, but she's seeing them. And she said she finds it really inspiring and just to keep up the great work, which I thought was really interesting. So you just never know who's watching, but be patient and keep being yourself and being consistent um, in, in what you're doing because eventually someone will go, you know what, I'm, I'm ready. I'm ready to come and take a look. Okay. So what pages are you liking and are they in alignment with your values and beliefs? So I've been on Facebook since 2010, I think. I think something like that. And um, so, of course, when I first got started, I didn't really know anything about Facebook. I was probably just liking all sorts of pages, <laughs> not really even thinking about um, whether they were probably a good fit for what I was trying to do. So there's lots of different pages out there, not just your, you know, um, pages that relate to Herbalife, but there's pages for every single thing out there. So I'll let you cover this one. Yep. So here's two examples of my Facebook page. <laughs> so Shelley um, likes Anchor Realty and Cara does. Lindy loves Tourism Fiji. I've just picked on those two that come up. So on, <laughs> oh, yeah, on my page. Right. So what you've got to consider here is this. What? <laughs> at, at some, so, so explain this in, very importantly. So at some point, Lindy, a tourism information for Fiji come up somewhere in whatever she's been on Facebook. And she's hit, yep, I like Tourism Fiji. Could have been in that moment of whatever. So then for at Tourism Fiji chooses to put an ad out for whatever particular reason time now and says, oh, your friend Lindy loves our, our page. And that's what comes up. So what's important here, and I'm going to show you a little bit further down. Um, last week, State of Origin. You're having a great time. Yeah, yeah, I'm having a cool time. And a KFC ad comes up and you oh, don't even pick it. You hit like on it on your phone. You've just said, I love KFC to every potential person on your Facebook page if they come up, if that's what happens. So it's important that you are very aware when a sponsored page comes up, if you like it, you go into it and you like it, you've just said to that sponsored page, they have the right to use your name as the help with their marketing. It's okay. important. So you may not have been on Facebook, you may not have been doing Herbalife, four months ago, five years ago, whatever the case may be, and you've liked something. And it's yeah. it sitting in the back in your algorithm. So these sponsored posts, you can see Anchor, Anchor Realty sponsored, Tourism Fiji sponsored. So this is a sponsored post, which means they're paying money to have their ad seen, mm -hmm. and often it's through friends of friends and things like that. So, um, so I, yeah, I have gone back and had yep. a look at all the pages of like what you're going to yep. show and, and taken off any that I thought weren't in alignment with what or we're in direct competition even with what I'm trying to do. So make sure you go and have a look at what pages have I liked and be pretty selective because obviously these things are also good. You can't really stop this sort of stuff. It's quite no. difficult. Um, but a lot more sponsored posts are starting to happen as you probably noticed. Yep. So we'll just go to the next page. So let's say, so that's, that's a screenshot of my page on the computer. So down with that black arrow, as you can see over the corner, it says pages. Yep. That's where you click. You click on that and then it will bring up this next page and normally it comes up your pages, but you click across to liked pages yeah. and then it will scroll through and give you 
all the pages you've liked at some point in your time on Facebook. Yeah. So when I just recently did this, I had, because I was living in Bunnaby at the time, I think it was a snack bar place and a coffee place we've been to at some point. I unlike them for a reason because I don't know. They could suddenly put an advertisement up about Coca-Cola and chips, for example, and I've got no control over it and it's being broadcast out to all of my friends, family, whatever. So I went through my page and my page now generally is it's fit stuff. It has lots of motivational stuff of pages I've liked. I love um, animal rescue, so I've clicked a lot of those pages. I've got a tattoo, so I've a lot of the tattoo pages I, I, I click. So because they will come up in my, that'll come up as information to me on a regular basis. We're all different, but you just need to go through there and hope you don't have a KFC or a McDonald's ad or something that goes against <laughs> the value that you're trying to portray to all the people around you. All right. So like I said, there's a black arrow to the top, the like pages, and then the like button here, you just click on that the, where it's got a liked and bang and you unlike it and it's gone. And can I just, sorry, there's one yep. other thing. Let me click that. <coughs> sorry to go back and forth. There's also here when you go to someone's page, it puts that you can um, you can like, you know, like them, like send a friend's request and you've liked them. Oh, sorry, your friends, sorry. And then there's follow. So sometimes what I've done is depending if I don't want to see people in my news feed that often or they're not really in alignment, but they still might be friends and I love them, but I might not want to see what they're always posting. I will unfollow them, but we're still friends. Okay, so um, just think about that as well. Like someone I really want to see all their content or it's someone that I'm um, dealing with a lot that I definitely want to follow them and we're friends, um, but there's two totally different things and you'll see it up the top of the, um, page it'll, it'll give you the options yeah. um, so have a think about that as well and sometimes when you the reason you do that is at times is <clears throat> will I will unfollow somebody <clears throat> but I will not unlike them because I know they're in a negative headspace they're not real great and if I'm putting out positive content because their page has got so much doom gloom negative I don't want to watch it but um, our positivity may be enough to swing them across to us at some point they'll reach out to you but I don't have to watch what they're putting up on a daily basis. Well, you can just snooze them too for 30 days if it's really bad. <laughs> yeah. So that's another good option as well. Yeah. So, you yeah. So, so it's really important. And I know the next slide might seem a little bit of a contradiction, <laughs> but I really want you to think about being authentic and being genuine, being real and be yourself on Facebook. So really showing the best parts of you. And I'm not saying being unrealistic or anything, but, you really want to be as authentic as you can. You don't want to portray something that isn't you. Okay, so that's really important. And then on the other leaf. <laughs> but <laughs> never vent. If you're having a bad day, never share it on Facebook. Contact a friend and talk to them. And there's a reason why. And I think this is really important <coughs> because, look, we can. Like, I have bad, not, I don't really have bad days, but I have bad we situations and challenging situations um, that, I could, eat, I could, you know, I could complain and, and do all that, but I would speak to you yep. know, about it, or ring mum or, you know, ring a friend and have a chat and, and do it that way. And I really, really strongly um, suggest this, okay? Do not vent on Facebook. It's a bit like dropping a pebble in a pond and then it has a ripple effect. So sending a post out on Facebook that's negative spreads out, okay? And really, why are you doing it? You're doing it for attention because... Generally, you're not going to get the kind of responses and, and just create this whole uh, negative snowball. So just, you know, pick up the phone, speak to someone, go and see a friend and get it out of your system. That way, don't put it on Facebook. So the reason, <coughs> branding. You, you're, you are your own brand. Whether you realise it or not, you are actually a media company. You're in advertising. You're a promotions manager. You're your own TV network because you can film and record place put it out there, you are the gossip magazine and you are a newspaper and a global news reporter. You have to think of that's who you are when you're on Facebook. You are trying to create the brand who you are. All right? Because this happens a lot. Life is full of disappointments and I just added you to the list. That comes up on people's Facebook pages or similar things <laughs> so regularly it's crazy. And that's what you do not want to be doing is that style of page. That's, you know what I mean? That happens so often. You get a Facebook, we'll, we'll look at things and you go, why did you put that up? 
and you can't really go and say, yeah, I won't comment in it, but I just look at it and go, you're trying to promote a brand of who you are and you've just you've just blurted to the world that you're, you're, you're full of disappointments and you don't want to do anything. So Look, if you've got a team member and you feel that's happening, really just pick up the phone or and try and have, have a chat with them and, and you know, just say, hey, is everything okay? Why don't you just give me a call next time? And, um, and you know, try and encourage them not to uh, vent on Facebook. Look, some things are funny. I, I get that there's a funny side to some things. Um, but if you're just continually doing that sort of stuff all the time, most people don't want to hear it. So they switch off. And especially if then you're the sudden next day going, join my 28-day challenge <laughs> after you've just vented for a couple of days, it doesn't match, if you know what I mean. So you've got to be consistent and be real, but think about what you're actually putting onto Facebook. Yeah. If you're using Facebook to put anything with Herbalife, anything to advertise who you are and what you're wanting to do, you have to really get this. You are a brand. You are your own brand. If you have a fan page, you are more than likely 100% more of a brand. You have to work that out. You also have to remember today, the millions or hundreds of thousands of dollars it used to take a media company to go and record something and then broadcast it and all these bits and then write an article about it, you can do in a few seconds. You have more power here than most of those multimedia companies ever originally had. And you have to understand that. What are you trying to promote? What are you trying to do? You have to stop before you do something and go, uh. often we'll go to each other or more so I'll go to Shell and go, hey, can I just read this to you and does it sound okay? Uh, better take that word out because it's the way I would have written it. Someone else has betrayed it. Remember, you are a brand. It's important, right? So how to win friends and influence people. We just bought this book the other day, In the Digital Age. So it's exactly the same style of book, but it's been written for our current world. We're starting to read it at the moment. Um, so we've all heard of the book, How to Win Friends and Influence People, but we now we live in a digital age, so it's been readapted for that process. So, um, And a good quote that come out of the book <coughs> is, we must first remember that today's relational successes are not measured on a scale of media. Which ones to use and how many friends fans or followers one can you accumulate and that's what a lot of people try and do i've got thousands of friends yeah how genuine are they they are measured on the scale of meaning becoming meaningful in your interactions and the path to success in any endeavor is simpler and far more sustainable the reason people notice people remember people are moved when their interactions with you always leave them a little better and when you think about it did that leave someone a little better not really <laughs> So you have to think of that. Have I left that person a little better than, than they were before I started? How to win friends and influence people is about having meaningful relationships. And when you think about it in the past, there was only three ways to communicate with somebody. Face to face, over the telephone, or write a letter. We have a, we have a totally different medium today, but it is nothing, it's exactly the same. We have to engage with the people Within Facebook, you have to build a relationship. And another way, an example of it is, if you met a brand new person tomorrow, would you ask them to marry you on the spot? No, you would build a relationship. Did you say yes, Lindy? <laughs> you would build a relationship. You would go out on dinner dates. You would communicate. You would converse. You would do all those things. Facebook is exactly the same process. You make a connection and it could take you days, weeks, months to actually build up to the point where you can have meaning, very meaningful conversations with that individual back and forth. You have to start to understand that's what Facebook is. And thank goodness for emojis. That's all I can say. <laughs> yes. So there you go. Cool. So just finishing off the three pillars um, for posting and um, creating content is one, you want to network with people and be, be connected. Um, so looking for people that are like-minded in on other Facebook groups and things like that. Obviously, people like to be entertained. So there's all the funny stuff like the little cute cat videos. Everyone loves them, right? And um, oh, that's okay. uh, and then there's content and information. So there's a few different reasons why we use Facebook. So people love to buy. And it's supposed to be a but, but I put buy again, but that's okay. But they hate to be sold to. And people join people. And that's that no like and trust factor that we all know about. And it definitely takes time. 
So what motivates your audience? So this is really um, from Tony Robbins, gaining pleasure and avoiding pain. So it says that more people will do, they'll do more to avoid pain than they will to gain pleasure, okay? So running away from pain is the stronger emotion. So example, losing weight, preventing a heart attack, not answering to a boss, more time with the grandkids. They're things that are, are the stronger emotion. So you want to probably approach three friends through Messenger and have a look at their profiles, make sure, um, you know, see what's happening in their lives and you might be able to find their pain point by even just looking through if someone is venting on Facebook. Uh, and I've done it before, I've had someone that's, um, posted something and I've just messaged them, hey, I can see that you're going through a bit of a thing at the moment or you're really struggling with your weight and you've just mentioned that. Uh, I feel like I could help you or have a solution. Would you be interested in getting some information? I've done that and um, and some have led to them getting on the products and some haven't. Um, but sometimes it's just worth you know engaging with that person on Messenger and maybe just having a goal of doing that three times a day or three times a week, whatever it is that feels right, right for you in that number situation. But you want to build a rapport. Remember it takes time, so be patient. Focus on being genuine and, the, and generating that conversation. Find their pain point, because most people have one. There's usually something they're not, they're dissatisfied with, and we're, we've been taught this right at the very beginning with the millionaire training tapes is, you know, we're looking for dissatisfied people. I can tell you there's plenty of them out there. And offer a solution, not in the first conversation, but just be real and genuine, genuine and caring. Growing your audience. Um, new eyes to see what you have to offer every single day. So adding friends onto your profile or if you've got a fan page or your groups and you want to gain le leverage through groups as well. So I help, yeah, obviously we have Challenge Yourself Daily and Healthy Active Lifestyle Group, which clients and members get added to. But you also have other groups out there that you can see that maybe have, um, like I'm on a few, I'm on a Work From My Home Mums Australia group and a few other different ones like that that I've joined. And I don't answer to every single message that gets posted on there, but every now and then I will personal message someone saying, oh, hey, I saw that you're looking for an opportunity and I thought you might be interested in what I have to offer and do that as well. So maybe aim for about being on 20 groups in, in total that are... Uh, relative to what you're interested in. You want to join ones that fit your niche. Uh, check the group rules for posting, no spamming. Okay, so always check them. It's really a good idea. And even message admin if you're not sure. Um, you can only have 5,000 friends on your Facebook profile, so choose wisely and add people that you would consider working with or that would make maybe an ideal client. Not that that's a 100% prerequisite, but it's probably a good idea if you know you've only got 5,000. Uh, when you get friends requests, make sure you review the person's profile, have a look, do they meet your requirements, and then personally message them if you're not sure who they are. This is for people you don't know, of course. So, for example, thank you for your friends request. Uh, what inspired you to reach out? And wait for seven days and delete the request if they don't respond back to you. Okay, so you're always qualifying people. And a good one for Jan too, if you're looking for um, people too, you always know if someone's spamming which is just sort of trying to catch you unaware and giving you bad information but they might say something like hello lovely lady like the, to me that's an automatically delete because I think okay yeah nice try <laughs> but, I don't know you, you get to learn the terminology and you get to learn what they're trying to do and yeah and if you go into their profile and there's like three or four pictures you go well that's a bit strange most people put up half a dozen or they have at, at least a few people when they first start so yeah, so yeah. definitely have a screening process and we should yeah. all be very good at that just from being in her life in the first place. Um, just being aware of, of attracting people that are actually genuine because that's what you want. And same with Messenger. If I'm sending messages to people on Messenger, I'm, uh -huh. I never do group messages unless it's for a specific thing like it's our challenge that we're having or well, I'll do one for that. But I generally use, I will go through and individually add that person's name to make it personal. Um, so, yes, I think it's really important making sure you go to those um, extra lengths uh, of doing that old-fashioned customer service and, um, you know, just the way of relating to people. Um, just some quick posts for your timeline and groups, the carrot and the stick. Um, so, for, look, there's lots of different ones, but if I could show you how to lose five kilos before Christmas without having hit the gym, would you be interested? If you'd like more information, PM me or hit me up. So, 
look, it doesn't have to be that exact wedding, but something like that, shape up for summer, join our next challenge. If I could show you how to earn extra income without hassling friends and family, or to do home parties, would you be interested? Or however you want to put that, you know, new division, um, you know, whatever it might be, um, PM me for some information. So there's some little sort of ads and you can have it with a um, with a image or without one, with a, with a picture. And you might post in five groups a day, aiming for 20 to 30 groups in total. This is the, this is how you want to build your, your some of your business, okay? This is just one way. And of course, there's still flyers and face-to-face -face and walk and talks and things like that as well. So you want to manage the friends requests, engage in the group. So for example, if you're part of a group, it's good to engage in the group as well, not just be a silent person. Um, so if you're like, for example, the work from home mums group Australia, I could probably do something in there once a week that might just be tips for the mums working from home, just to give some value so that I'm still adding to that group. I'm not just jumping on people when they're asking that they're interested in the business. So thinking about why you're in that group and what you could contribute. So this is your non-Herbalife groups, okay? Friends requests, questions, reaching out to you, that sort of thing. And then continually growing your audience. So people um, adding people onto you as your friends, uh, but also adding people into your group. So your groups are also Healthy Active Lifestyle mm -hmm. and Challenge Yourself Daily. So that is your group. So add to those as well. Anything else? Okay, before you go to that. <clears throat> another thing that I just want to add on before Shelly goes to what's coming up is another thing you've got to think about when you're using Facebook or any of these platforms at the moment. You need to manage your time, not let it manage you. So often the thing will ding and you'll pick it up and you're going, oh, what's that? Will you really, are, is that time more relative to go and answer it? Yes or no? In some cases, you know you're waiting for a specific call, you're waiting for a specific message. But you have to start to understand, is this managing me or am I managing it? It is important because if every time this thing goes off and you're trying to get something done, out doing flyers and stopping every five minutes to talk on this, where, are, where is the, my time being managed? Everything has to be relative to what you believe is important to you. Because if all you're doing all day long is answering someone else, you're not running your day. The day started to run you again. And you just have to think about that because these things go off so often at the moment that they start to take control instead of us being in control of when we want to hang on a minute. No, I will do my Facebook later on this afternoon when, I'm, when I've got time for that, when I, when I complain about it. It is important that you start to manage your time effectively where that's concerned. Yeah, well, I like, definitely like to cut off at a certain time of night where I, I won't <coughs> actually respond to messages um, so that people don't think they can be <laughs> yep. all hours. Um, and sometimes on the weekends, I'll have that little bit of um, non-social yep. media time as well. And I think it's good for you to do that. I, I know some people recommend that you don't have your phone in your room when you sleep and things like that. Um, so yeah, just having that time when um, you're just not available and it's okay, you know, people will survive. And the other thing with it is one of the biggest time wasters under the sun, and we have to remember that. We sit there and scroll and scroll and scroll and scroll and scroll when we could have been actively out finding brand new people, talking to brand new people, instead of just sitting there brain locked into what's on that system. Absolutely. Definitely. So, um, Jan, just wanted to get some feedback from you because obviously Facebook's fairly you know, new for you. In, in, I know you've got a profile. I've seen it. Uh, but did you have any questions or any feedback for us? I think you're muted. You muted yourself. Yeah. Okay, sorry. Um, yeah, no, it's been very, very helpful, actually. I mean, uh, I'm not gung-ho on Facebook. I, oh, I, I can see the need for it, but I'm not, you know, wanting to do a heap. But I probably do need to understand it better than what I do. And I do, probably do need to change my photo. It's been there for years. Uh, which is something I'll probably do. But, yeah, no, it's been very helpful. Thanks, guys. Not a problem. And the other thing that you mentioned, Ross, was uh, Google. I have used Google for a lot of different things recently and uh, I've never thought of Googling how to use Facebook, so I might do that. Yeah, well, that was the tip that I got from Gary Vee when I read his book and you watched any of his broadcasts. He says, we live in a modern world where you don't have to go to the library anymore. You can type anything you want into Google and it will pretty well come up. You, there's a lot of garbage in amongst it too, but yeah. you can scroll through that and most things today pretty well have a YouTube video clip to how to do whatever it is. And you can sit there and go, oh, if you don't want to read it, you can watch it. If you want to read it, you read it. Yeah. You know, I mean, it's all available to us today. Yeah. 
Yeah, uh-huh. which is really good because I'm a very visual person. I had to learn how to sort of put the drill bit in the drill a little while ago, yeah. changing number the number plates on the car, and I had to Google it. So it was very, very helpful. So, yeah, yeah Google's very good. Yeah. And, and remember with Facebook and all of this, it's all personal. Yeah. Just the way, because I know even between Shelley and I, the way Shelley uses Facebook and the way I use Facebook are totally, are totally two different things. I actually don't enjoy the system. I, because I know for me to get the full benefit out of it, I need to be sitting on that computer for half a day doing all the things that are platformed if I want to make that my business. I don't want to make that the business. I prefer to do what we do is put flyers in letterboxes and talk to people face to face. Yeah, I'm of that accord as well, I must admit. Yep. Yeah, so look, this is a very basic um, Facebook tips and information tonight. And look, we, there could be so much more, even right. running Facebook campaigns and things yeah. like that too, which I'm still learning. There's so much more. But I think the basics is to get your profile right and think about what you're liking and who you have on your friends list and everything. Um, really you know, scrutinising those things to make sure it's all in alignment with w- what you want to do. And look, Facebook for me is a lot to do with family because I have a lot of family interstate. Like my mum and dad, like my closest family, my brother's only just got on Facebook and my sister's not on Facebook and mum and dad are not on Facebook. So the <laughs> people that, you know, um, that I'd like to share stuff actually aren't seeing it anyway. So, but I have a lot of other friends and family on Facebook too that don't live here. So I like to share what's happening in my life and yes, share my passion, but I don't want it to be overboard and um, just fanatical. I try and um, just pace myself a little bit on it basically. So we're going to go up to what's next. Upcoming events and promotions. So it's mid-month. Time to check your gauges and review your stats. Are you on track for the, your month's goals? Do you have goals? If you don't, you better set some. <laughs> and um, looking at are you on track, go and check your biz work. See anyone that's getting close to anything that you could help them uh, achieve. I know we've got a um, couple of people that we want to help. Um, obviously, what are your local events? And if you don't have one, start one. Uh, when's your local STS? When's it coming? Who can you invite or bring with you? I know I've got a few people on the list for this Saturday in Brisbane that I've invited that I will get back to again and see if I can, you know, um, do one more invite to get them there. Uh, we've got Bill Hayden as our special guest. I'm pretty excited about that. But STS has happened all around Australia and all around the world. Uh, you've got your local kickoffs that will be happening just after that. That's to really help you start the month with some momentum. So when are your local kickoffs? Are you going to start one yourself if you don't have one in your local area? Um, it could just be something simple like a shake party as your kickoff. You know, it doesn't have to be a full-on training. It could be something very basic, but it's something at the beginning of the month. Uh, the World Team Retreat and Tab Team Masterclasses in September uh, in Manly and Sydney. And we just wanted to congratulate everyone because uh, obviously this is when the royalties are running and everything like that. So everyone that's qualified for the member activation program, the Herbalife Vacation to Vietnam was this the last month? Yes. So we've uh-huh. still got time for people that are, um, you know, almost qualified, just go for it. And anyone that's moved up the marketing plan as well, we just want to say congratulations to everybody. Um, but if you're on track to qualify for some things this month, just go for it. You're halfway through. Anything is possible over the next two weeks. Uh-huh. Okay, and if you just go for it and give it everything you've got, you're going to grow anyway. That's how we look at it. Um, did I miss anything, Jan? Oh, cool. Okay, so just finishing off on a Jack Canfield quote, decide what you want, believe you can have it, believe you deserve it, and believe it's possible for you. So um, thank you, everyone, for your attention tonight. I'll just stop sharing so you can see everybody. So I hope you got a lot out of it. And again, it's just that um, refinement on your... Facebook pages and just really look at, you know, go and have a look at over the next few days and maybe give us some feedback as well. Um, I think everyone's muted themselves. <clears throat> oh, we can't. Sure. We don't no, sorry. <laughs> so, um, thank you everyone for your um, attention tonight <clears throat> and your con- contributions and your good news, Rosemary and Jan. And um, next week we've got another great topic to help your business grow. Um, love some more good news coming through as well. Any personal development, results that are being achieved, um, new clients, members that are coming through as well. Um, I'm going to convert this call and put it out into the YouTube link and send the recording off for you. Um, so make sure you share and tag your team members. Okay, and um, and there's something else, but I forgot what it was. Is that anything else? No, the only thing I was going to say is, is there anything you do want to know? Because if there is, Shoot Shelly a message in Messenger, 
so we can put something together that's helpful. Because this is about helping you. It's also about helping any of your mm. team members or anybody you know. So we're trying to think of things that we stumble with from time to time or we see, or we see team members down the line go, oh, what we need to talk to. Let's talk about everybody about that. So is there anything mm. you're struggling with or something that's not clear, please let us know so that we can put a PowerPoint together for it and help work through them. You know what I mean? Good on you. I've already got one. I'll send you a little message on. Sure. <laughs> because that's what it's about. This, this is about working together and helping everybody build. So there's no point us just talking our hearts off up here if it's not information at times that's no benefit to you when there's something you go, oh, I really don't know how to, how do we do whatever it may be. Look, I understand this business is very simple. It's just use word talk. It's that simple. But there's little bits of it at times that not everybody's fully aware of that we don't. And it forces us then to go and dig in and look into those areas if need be to help you out. Yeah. No worries. And we yeah, well, I'm hoping to get on top of all the um, the the internet. I'm unmuted, yeah. Um, the internet side of things, particularly because I can have all the plans in the world. The boy has obviously been sick and everyone's been yeah. out of sorts this week. So once I get the little tweak, mm -hmm. the, uh, you know, the internet side where I can, you know, it's like, um, what's the name? It's out at Biloela, you know, like she's out in the middle of the bush somewhere. So she's limited. So she has to circumvent systems that work for her. So I suppose that's what I'm trying to do here. So once I get those little tweaks, then that's something I can offer to other people as well. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, mm. Wendy, okay. so everyone have a wonderful week. Yep. You too. Finish you. Month strong when we're halfway through. So you've got two more weeks now to, um, you know, really uh, finish the month off on the best mm. month that you can possibly do. Um, and we'll put, uh, do all the rest of the promotions next week and yep. probably show those flyers. And, um, yeah, I'll send the recording out in the tick. Good. Send the sun down our way too. <laughs> we'll try. It was, only 21, <laughs> it was only 21 here today. Oh, show off. <laughs> Steve, talk to him, will you? <laughs> You're always welcome to visit. Yes, <laughs> You'll be yeah. sorry you said that. <laughs> Thanks for sharing tonight, everyone. Thanks, right. Mastermind Bye. Group. Okay. Bye, Jan. Bye, Rosemary. Bye, Bye. 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 B